I was with my father's Rav, the Rav of the shul that I grew up with, the Nidverne Rebbe Shlita. He's a Talmud of Rebbe Aaron Cutler, Zatzal. He's a multi-talented, big tzaddik. And I was driving him somewhere. And I asked him, I said, I'm just curious, when, when you were the Rav in Forest Hills, right, when my sisters and brothers grew up, he moved out when I was 14. But he was a Rav there. He really had a kihila, a big thriving kihila. How many parents came to you to speak to you and to say, I don't know what to do about my son. I don't know what to do about my daughter. And what should we do about this? And how, how much of that did you have to deal with? You know, it's like, he it was like laughing. You know, today every Rav is dealing with crisis. Kids who are cutting themselves, kids who are dropping out. The, the amount of work that you parents have to do for your children is just unprecedented. And that's even for the healthy ones. The amount of, of, of worry and work and avoid the rabba and reading books. Our, our parents or grandparents, they didn't read books. You know, there was one book and it had two pages on it with a diagram. One was like this and the next page was like this. And, and it said, repeat as necessary. <laughs> and it worked quite well. Whether we, whether, whether we uh, didn't like it so much, worked quite well. And, and, but we didn't fall apart. And then people they weren't guarding themselves and, and saying, cursing out the parents. This stuff didn't exist. How many, how many, I asked them, how many kids in your shul want, were, were doing drugs? None. How many kids in your shul were, were in psych wards? You know? None. How many parents came in crying and we don't know what to do? We, we were told to lock our kid out of the house. And we had some guys in our shul who went off to Derech. There were, there were some things that happened, but there was none of this crisis stuff. There was none of it. And it's like, wow. And even the regular kids. The regular kids, regular parents today do so much for their children. It's unbelievable. And each one needs a tutor and, a, and an OT and a, and a PT and an MP3. And a, everybody needs, everybody, nobody just works. You know, there's like one APK autopilot kid that's on autopilot and somehow manages to actually come home, do homework. Their hands are working. They can draw. Most of the kids need something's not working. And it's like, well, you need all kinds of therapy from the time that they had how to swallow, how to use their tongue. Any of you, you know about these kids that they, their tongue doesn't work properly? I, we got one of those and they don't swallow well. And it's like, all you need to do when you're born is swallow. I mean, how hard is that? Just concentrate. You know, maybe we should try that, you know? And there's all kinds of stuff now, all kinds of diagnosis, and everybody has anxiety, and everybody has a little of this, and everything is stamped. If you're a little, mm, you're, mm, you're this, every, and we're working and working, and it's unbelievable. And Baruch Hashem, if you have insurance, at least it's paid for. A lot of you are making a lot of parnasa, and the kids need it. The kids really need it. So kids go to school, and then they come home, and they have like, Work, 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 work. You know, this tutor, that tutor, this tutor, that tutor. And the kids who are struggling where yeshiva is painful for them. And then they come home and we're like, because we love you and we have to, which we do, we hired a special pain professor that's going to come give you extra pain at night. Like these kids need more vacation after sitting in school. And it's like, we have a private tutor. We have a private person and he's going to come and give you private pain, you know, while everyone's having fun, you know, because you got to keep up and you do. So it's hard being, hard being a parent. It's hard being a kid and it's hard being a rav. Today, the rabbanim, the least that they need to know is Tyra. They need to know how to deal with all kinds of problems. I spoke to a big Rosh Hashiva. He said, I, I became a Rosh Hashiva because of my, my knowledge in Torah. I learned for 20 years, 30 years. He's a Talmud of this, Talmud of that. He goes, if I had to lose one thing, it would be my Torah. <laughs> he goes, now I'm dealing with Bachrim with problems. Yesterday, a 10th grade Rebbe of a top Yeshiva came over to me to Shmuz. He says, you don't know how many boys are struggling with stuff, Hashem Yerachim. In a top yeshiva, I went to a top yeshiva. I don't know what I was doing there, but I went to a top yeshiva. How many guys were struggling? I don't know. It's, it's so difficult to be a kid. It's so difficult to be parents. It's so difficult to be a Rebbe. It's so difficult to be a Rosh Hashiva. Everybody's busy with mental illness and mental problems and pressure and anxiety and OCD and, and, uh, and, and depression it's unbelievable dar that we're living in. And 30, 40 years ago, nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. It was like the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, good years. Basically, Klali Yisrael was like steiging and everybody was going, you know, frummer and frummer and frummer. And nobody dreamed that we could be having now an epidemic, a pandemic, where the nicest families in Klali Yisrael are just struggling with kids who are, they don't want to live. And they're struggling with 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 
being an atheist, dating Goyim, doing drugs. You know, when we grew up, drugs are for Goyim. Jews don't do drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's so Goyim, the whole thing. Tattoos, how many Jewish kids... It's, it's part of the culture of going off the derek, part of the Gaisha culture, but how many Jewish kids have tattoos? And we know it's because of pain and it's a scar, blah, blah, blah. But growing up, anybody knew a Jewish kid that would get a tattoo was like, must have been such a small percentage. And now there's so, it's, it's all part of it. So I think that it comes to the nine days, comes to the three weeks and the nine days. It's all gallows. You know, we thought we're not going to be in Gullus because we, we, we got through the Holocaust, Rahman al and, and and some of us survived, and then everything was great, and everybody was doing well, and everything's great. It's like, Ki'ilu, we're not going to have a Gullus, and boy, is there a Gullus. Not to mention the families that never lose children, and the families that are under such pressure to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for rehabs and boot camps, and, and, and all kinds of stuff that may or may not work. And, and the fighting at home and the, the, the tension in the families that we're going through, it's enough to get us on our knees. You know, it's enough that when that comes to Shabbat, we have what to cry about. We have a lot to be proud of also. We have Baruch Hashem, good kids. We, you know, my friend tells me, he says, Avi, you got to get out of your, this little bunker. You got to get out more often. He tells me, come to Bar Park. Come, there's a basement in, in Babov. And you go at one o'clock in the morning, there's like 100 guys, 200 guys learning the color room. He goes, you got to see, there's some people doing well also. But I'm busy with the people who are not. And it's, it's painful. It's very painful. And we certainly can ask Hashem to send Mashiach. You don't need to be Chabad to want Mashiach, right? And, and we really have a lot of pain in Klal Yisrael. So it's interesting that, that the whole year, some people who are not in that matziv can kind of forget about it and whatever. And Hashem gave us a mourning period to remember that this is really not our home and we're not supposed to be here. That's the bottom line. And really, I look at the, the kids and the next generation, all their pain and confusion and the pain that we have for them we adults have to take responsibility because every generation that the Beis HaMikdash is not rebuilt, Ki'ilu, Nechrav, means that, means that if there would be a Beis HaMikdash this year and we carry it on and behave the way that we do, it would be destroyed. Wow. Wow. I mean, we're not that bad. Apparently we are because it wasn't built. And as I'll say, if, it wasn't, if you weren't meriting for it to be here, then it means that it wouldn't be here even if it was here and it would be destroyed. And then the gullus gets thicker and deeper, and then you have kids who are in such a gullus that they don't know day or night. They don't know if they're, if they're, you know, they don't know anything. And now they don't know if they're a boy or a girl. How, how horrible is that? That kids can, can be whatever age and just, they don't know anything. They know nothing about anything. And, and whose fault is it? It's ours. It's ours because we adults, didn't do something enough to, to rectify the chet of sinas chinam. And it wasn't destroyed because of lack of Yiddishkeit. It wasn't destroyed because of lack of kailu. It was very specific. It wasn't even because of the Gimel of Eres Chamuris. You know, it's interesting. The first base of Mikdash that was destroyed because of what seems to be the worst sins, Gimel of Eres Chamuris. We all know what they are? Should we put pictures on? No, we can't. Okay. Though that base of Mikdash was rebuilt 70 years later, for the worst of errors. But for Sinas Chinam, it's, it's 2,000 years. It's 2,000 years. It's horrible. And, and it's, we have to do something. Now, what are we going to do? You know, we have to really try to, to get this thing built. <laughs> we, we really do. And you parents that are struggling in the most sensitive area, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot to cry about, but the, probably one of the most sensitive areas is, is having a kid who's, who, who's struggling with life, doesn't want to live, and is in, in, in mortal danger. And, and even those who are spiritually lost, it's very painful to see and to watch the confusion. and the <sighs> We have what to cry about, and we have what to ask Hashem about, but it seems like Hashem's saying, yes, you should cry, but I need you to do something. And until we change, this isn't going to get fixed. And if you, can't, if you think that it can't get worse, it's getting worse and worse and worse. I met with Rebarach Martcha Zrachi, very big tzaddik, Gadol Ador, in the Litvish of Israel. And I said, 
Viful of this year. How, how, how horrible is this? And he looked up at me. He was like looking down. He looked up to me. He says, it's going to get a lot worse. It's like, I don't know what he sees, but he sees that it's going to get a lot worse. And that was, you know, a couple years ago. And now, a few years later, it is a lot worse. Things, things are deepening. The confusion is deepening to such a core confusion that the kids who are weak because of, I believe they're strong. I just believe they're acting weak or they're, they're hurt, they're damaged because of trauma and abuse and whatever. But once you're out of the system and you're not feeling it, it used to be that you went to the pool hall and you smoked a couple of cigarettes and you had a beer. That's how Kids at Risk started 25 years ago. They were 17, 18, 19, you know? And now they're 11, 12, 13. I got a call about a nine-year-old. Nine-year-old cursing out his parents. I, I want to die and all of that. And it's happening more and more and more. And it's like, so, so what do you do with a nine-year-old? What do you do with a 10-year-old, an 11-year-old? How could they be an atheist? They don't even know what God is. How can they be, which is for the same thing for the teenagers. It's not like they studied a bunch of books you know, and they decided there's no God. It's all pain. But they have little kids that are hurting. Little kids. Little, and all the kids are, are, are good. They're really good. And they're hurting. And now that it's, it's deepening to such a degree that it comes out with tattoos and it comes out with 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 so many of our kids today, this didn't exist five years ago, are confused about their sexuality. Asexual and, and, and all other stuff, you know, and it's like almost like just sin and be normal. We could deal with that, but you, they're not even sinning. They're so sick that they're not even, they're like, I'm out. I'm not, and they're not even, and you can't even call them a Baltaiva because they, they're not even doing anything wrong. It's, it's so complicated and who knows what's coming around the bend. Because you know, the way it's by the Goyim, it ends up being by our Machna. Rahman al if we're going to end up having to deal with this on a mass scale, like they are. Rahman al if that's going to happen, it would be just, it, I wouldn't want to be here. I don't think any of us would want to be here to have to deal with this on, on the next level. I get calls of so much, so uh, the next level of problems, I say, I'm too old. And I am leaving it for somebody else because I just can't deal with it. I can't lead that ship. It's too, it's too crazy. And, and you know, Hashem Yirachim. And we, we got to figure out, like, okay, where's the breakdown here? And Hashem is saying, it's, it's, not, you know, it's not just in our ruchni, it's, it's senas chinam. And uh, we better figure out how to play in the sandbox nicely. Otherwise, it doesn't matter who, who you are and where you have, which part of whatever, none of it matters. It's all going to fall apart. It's all going to fall apart. We're going to have so many kids. What's happening? The numbers keep going up and up and up. The age keeps dropping. And I'm getting calls about 40-year-olds. I'm getting calls about 50-year-olds. I'm getting calls about people my age who are going off the derech because of trauma that happened 30, 40 years ago. And they say, it. this is what it's happened. And okay, so you, know, you kept it together. Just keep going. You know, like, And they're falling apart. And they're going to... I just met somebody... Like, much, much older than me. He's going to trauma therapy and good for him. He's healthy enough. He, he has what to fight for. Not like these kids. They don't have a life yet. He has a family and, and, and men and women suffering, suffering and they weren't suffering 20 years ago. It's like Hashem opened up a valve literally of emotional pain. And the same people, it's not just that kids are weaker. A lot of Adults were stronger 20 years ago. And I'm sure that in the Teva, there's a reason for this. They're going to find out it's, it's some kind of a spray or some kind of a, something they do to the food or something. But, but brains are breaking. Adults are breaking. Just breaking. And then it becomes a Yiddishkeit issue, it becomes a marriage issue, it becomes a kid's issue, it becomes everything issue. That's the way it is. They're falling apart. And I encourage people that, who are in pain to get help. There's a lot of new help, but it's, it's sad to watch. So we all need to get our act together to make sure that there will be no more Tisha B'Av. And to be honest, when I grew up, we cried about the Holocaust, okay? But I didn't, you know, you know it, was, it, was, it faded away a little bit. But today, we have a lot to cry about. So we have to cry, but we have to do. We have to figure out how to do this and how to spread this like a campaign to have ambassadors. 
and and to create this 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 thing. It's not just anyway anymore. Just we have to do everything else also. It's not. Let, let's go be makar people. It's like let's let's all just get along. Let's learn how to get along. Not easy, but that's obviously our job because until that happens, we're going to keep on hurting, and we're going to have to hurt so bad until we realize that no, we we got to fix this. It's it's a big shame, and I I hope that there's going to be a surprise that Mashiach is going to come and explain how we got there without that. But according to Chazal. According to Chazal, we have to rectify sin as chinam. And until we do, we're all doomed. And nobody's going to say, I'm fine, because even if your kids are fine, you're going to have grandchildren being raised in the scholars, and, and we don't want them here. So we have to, it's a real wake-up call to me. And um, I don't know, we got to make some kind of campaign or get everybody involved in, in just fixing sin as chinam, once and for all.